What's going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lions Den, and today I'm gonna to take you through day one where you can train like me. So in this video, we're gonna cover some deadlifting tips, some overhead pressing tips, a little bit of close grip benching tips, and then I'm gonna give you guys a conditioning workout at the end that you are more than welcome to try in your own training. So let's get in onto it. What's up guys? So if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys head on down and click subscribe and hit the bell for the notifications so you guys can stay up to date with all these videos. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to take you guys through this training day, which is my first training day of four. I'm gonna give you guys the in and outs of my training and then at the end of all this, I wanna give you guys my sample programming block for you to try with your training. So uh, we're gonna dive right on into the training content now, so let's go. All right guys, so let's cover this training footage. Now, typically when I warm up, I try to keep it as fast as possible. So I start with an empty barbell. I'll do a ton of reps with the empty barbell and I'll slowly work up in weight. And the rest I wanna give myself in warm ups is just the time it takes me to get the plates. Uh, so this is me with 135, greasing the groove, and I'll work all the way up to a heavy triple today with no straps allowed. Uh, because I was contemplating doing the official strongman games, which is in November, and you have to do an online qualifier. And one of the qualification lifts is a three rep max deadlift, and you can use whatever bar you want, but you just can't wear straps. Now, my grip is not the greatest, uh, and I have been using straps for a long time, because most strongman events, and even the one in official strongman games, the actual competition, you will be allowed to wear straps, but I guess they're trying to wean some people out. Uh, so this is a 405, and uh, I think I hit this for a set of five, and then after that I work two triples, and I hit uh, about one single, and then I go right to my top set, which ends up being uh, 635, which I was happy with. I almost lost it at the top, uh, which you guys will see in the video with just my grip going, but if I had straps, it probably could actually went a lot higher. Uh, so this is a 545, and this is 585, just for a quick single, just kind of gauge it, and I hopped right up to the 635. Now the deadlift bar typically is going to have more whip, so you're going to see the bar bend more before it actually breaks off of the floor. Uh, it's a personal preference if you like to use a deadlift bar or a stiff bar or whatever federation you compete in. But that's the 635. That's what I end up using for my submission video for the online qualifier. And uh, I go for this last rep and you can see my hands starting to slip. And uh, luckily I got to that deep dark place, squeezed my butt, locked it out and we're good. And then from there, I went into some strict pressing, and the biggest thing I wanna show you guys is different angles here. Uh, I do that classic press, which is where you kind of, uh, the bar will come down slightly uh, to give you a little bit of a rebound, and then you'll press it straight up. Um, some competitions will allow this, uh, others won't, uh, but strong man, you can really do anything you want to get the bar overhead, so for me, this is the best press uh, variation for me to use for my strict press. Uh, typically I like to keep my elbows a little bit tighter to the body, kind of like stacked on my lats. My grip is gonna be a little bit more narrow and that's become more narrow over time. So it's something for you guys to play with or think about. Uh, it helps me utilize my triceps a lot because I have very strong triceps and my press is probably my strongest attribute when it comes to strongman. So this is 225 and you guys can get that front angle. My hands are a little bit closer kind of trying to keep my, my body nice and tight. Uh, and I'm keeping my chin tucked back as I press and then sticking my head slightly through, um, which you see in a better side angle that my ears are in line with my bicep. And that's a cue that I give a lot of my athletes. So this is me pressing it up. As you guys can see. Now there's all different press variations. This is day one. So I'll probably do a pin press at some point and then something with a little bit more volume, whether it be a banded press or a Z press, something like that towards the end of the week. Uh, this is the side angle, which I was saying, you can see my head pushing through and my ears are in line with my biceps. And then from there, we moved over to close grip bench. Now, I am more of a close grip bencher as my main bench, just because I said I really like to strengthen my triceps. And I find that the triceps have a lot of carryover to any pressing events and you're never gonna bench in a strongman competition or at least not to my knowledge, uh, maybe one random event, but for the most part, there's no benching in strongman. So I try to use whatever bench variation I can to get as strong 
uh, as possible that will carry over to my sport. Uh, so this is 275. Um, I've been really trying to work on a really tight setup, which you guys will see me get into. Uh, just making sure that my traps and shoulders are into uh, the bench, utilizing my legs, keeping my whole foot on the floor. Uh, you can see that arch that I have right there currently. I think this is uh, 295 or 305, I'm not sure. But I, I wanna show you guys how I'm working on uh, kind of that J angle where you bring the bar down and then you're pushing it back towards your face. Now I used to just press up and down very vertically, uh, but I'm trying to get more of that curve involved that you'll see with most power lifters. So this is 315. Elbows are staying nice and tight. Making sure that I'm not letting the bar roll back in my hand, keeping it straight over top of uh, my palm so it's a bone on bone structure from the wrist down to the elbow into the shoulder. And this is my top set at 325 for a set of five. I'm trying to keep my elbows as, as tight as I can without really letting them flare too much. And keeping that tight uh, position. I'll put a link up for you guys to check out um, above. But uh, something you guys can do for me is answer in the comment section down below of how many days a week are you guys uh, deadlifting? And where are your sticky points in your deadlift? Is it from the floor or is it from the knee or the shin or maybe your lockout? Interested to hear what you guys have to say. So put that down in the description if you can uh, so I can see where most of your areas are uh, that you guys are getting stuck with and I'll make a video on that. So as you guys know, uh, I do a lot of conditioning. So for this conditioning session, uh, I actually was, I ran a time mile, which you guys will see the video for that in the future. Uh, and then we did sprints. Now me being an idiot, uh, I went right into the sprints full send without really uh, warming up too much and I strained my hip a little bit. Uh, so it was supposed to be a sled push down and back for 100 feet. I had to do a pull uh, so I could still get it in but I should change it slightly because of the pain. Uh, then from there you go to uh, six ball slams as hard and as explosive as you can and then right into five pull-ups. And you're gonna run through that for two rounds as fast as possible and then you rest until your heart rate completely comes back down. So that is a big thing that people get wrong with HIIT training or high intensity interval training is they don't let their heart rate come all the way down before starting the next set and whether that be sprints or whatever you're doing. Uh, so make sure that you are letting your heart rate completely come down and recover so that you can hit it hard again with the same intensity. Uh, but this is just a little bit of everything, it's just kind of like a GPP day in conditioning. I sped this up for so I didn't bore you guys too much. Um, but I did two rounds and I was coming in around uh, like a minute and a half uh, ish for my time. And then I'd rest about one to two minutes and I'd hit that again. And I did that for a bunch of rounds. Um, so you can set a clock if you want to see how many rounds you could get in for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever time you have, or just set a round time. But we're going to go back to the closing. So hopefully you guys got some tips that are gonna help you out with your deadlift, your bench, or your overhead press, and maybe you can try this conditioning and see how it works for you. I put out a lot of programs before, uh, and I have a, actually a link down below for a free program that you can try, and I'm also gonna be putting out another free block for you guys to just try in your program whenever you want. Uh, we do have the Facebook group called the Iron Lions on Facebook, which is actually about a thousand people in there right now, uh, primarily weightlifting, strongman, and powerlifters. Uh, we have a bunch of coaches in there constantly giving free feedback and, and helping you guys out. Uh, so if you guys want to head over to that Facebook page, it's really cool. I post a lot of articles and it's just a free community uh, for everybody to just you know, learn from one another. So it'd be really cool if you could check that out. Uh, but like I said, guys, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys hit that notification bell and I will catch up with you guys next time. Stay with me, Track Machine. Peace.